Our next topic in talking about molecular geometry is looking at a, another theory that has been used to understand uh, the shapes of molecules. And this is one that's called valence bond theory. So we started with valence shell electron pair repulsion theory, Vesper theory, and now we're, we're looking at this, which combines some of the ideas of quantum mechanics with, with some similar ideas from uh, Vesper theory. But this, now we're going to be looking at how do atomic orbitals, right? We've talked about these orbitals being present on individual atoms. How do these combine to form bonds? That's the basic idea between, behind valence bond theory. We're thinking about the orbitals of the valence electrons forming bonds. That's where the name valence bond uh, theory comes from. Uh, and so the, I, the main co conceptual idea here, uh, and we're just going to introduce this now, we'll get into more details as we go into future videos on this. Uh, but the main idea here is that atomic orbitals will overlap. And that will form bonds between molecules. So the simplest thing we can look at is looking at two hydrogen atoms. Let's think about the bond, uh, the orbitals involved here. So each hydrogen atom has one electron and a 1s orbital. And so we can think about these two hydrogen atoms when they're separate from each other. These are going to be nice spherical orbitals uh, that look just like we, we have drawn. So I'm drawing them as balls here, but remember these are, of course, three-dimensional structures. Now, when the hydrogen atoms approach each other, as they get closer and closer, a bond is going to form and they're going to share their electrons. What happens to these orbitals? What happens to the probability distribution of the electrons? Well, valence bond theory says that the two nuclei will, will get closer and closer and the orbitals will start overlapping with each other. And this will merge to become a single bonding orbital, right? And this is uh, what we call a sigma bond. Uh, why do we call this sigma bond? What, means, what does sigma bond mean? It means that the electrons are shared between the two nuclei. As we'll see as we start thinking about p orbitals, we're going to have other types of bonds that show up where the sharing of electrons is not directly between the nuclei. And that'll be a different type of bond, which we'll get to, but we're not there yet. OK, and that's the basic premise of valence bond theory is that we're going to take these individual orbitals, put them together, they're going to overlap and form bonding orbitals. And you know, our two electrons, right, we have an electron in each, each here, are going to combine and be in this combined sigma bond orbital. And that's, that's, the, that's the conceptual idea here. Right, this works great for hydrogen, but what about something like, uh, you know, something with p orbitals? So we go down to the second row of the periodic table, and maybe we're thinking about like a carbon atom or something like that. All right, so now our valence electrons are 2s electrons and 2p electrons. So we have two of each, right? In the, uh, we're going to ignore the 1s electrons because if they're the core electrons, they're not going to participate in bonding. They're not valence electrons. Well, if we think about the shapes of our orbitals, so we're going to have a, so, we're gonna, so here's the nucleus here. We're going to have a 2s orbital. And then we'll also have two p orbitals. They're going to look something like this. So this is maybe 2px. This is 2PY, and there's a third one that I'm not drawing that's going to be like in and out of the board, in and out of the, the, the plane. So there's a third orbital we're, we're looking at here that I'm not including. Um, and so how do we, we know that carbon, if it forms bonds, is going to form not in this sort of geometry. We're not going to have one bond that's sort of like a sphere and another bond that's at 90 degrees. Uh, carbon is going to form either like a tetrahedral geometry or a trigonal planar geometry or maybe a linear geometry, but not something that looks anything like these S and P orbitals. So there's something we have to do to make sense out of this. And the conceptual idea of valence bond theory here is that these orbitals are not going to, when, an, when a molecule forms, these orbitals don't stay the same as they are when they are uh, on a single atom sitting by itself. And so we have what we call hybrid orbitals. And these are, we're going to mix together 
S and P orbitals to make new ones that have the correct uh, shape, have the correct geometry. And we'll get orbitals with the correct geometry. So all of the geometries and things that you've been learning with Vesper theory are still going to apply here. It's just now we're thinking about what does the actual quantum mechanics look like a little bit behind this. And that's the idea of valence bond theory is we're trying to understand what's happening with these atomic orbitals and how are they going to look uh, to make the correct shapes that we learn. Uh, and so if we're looking at, for example, a carbon atom that's in a tetrahedral geometry, we need to combine these orbitals such that we have orbitals pointed in tetrahedral geometry. So if we take our 2s orbital and our 3 2p orbitals, we can combine these. So we have this shape along with our x, y, and I'll try and draw the z. When we mash these together, mix them up, what we'll get is four orbitals, and we call them sp3 hybrid orbitals. And what they'll look like when we do this is that they'll have some character of both the s orbitals and the p orbitals. So they'll still sort of have that lobe sort of structure of a, of a p orbital, but one of our orbitals is going to be pointed something like this. Another one is going to be pointed at 109.5 degrees. So if we sort of have this angle here, we're going to have the same geometry. Then we'll end up with an orbital that sort of points this way and another orbital that points this way. And I'm trying to draw these. So this would be our, like our wedge, and this would be like our dashed lines. Now, let me get a, a, a better drawing of this. So let me just find my diagrams here from your textbook that I think will make this a little bit easier to visualize. All right. Oh my God, it's just good. a lot of pictures from this chapter. Okay, here we go. All right. This is the figure I want. Sorry, just trying to find the one that shows this the best. All right, we get this basic idea. We have our 2s and 2p orbitals. The energy of the hybrids is going to be a little bit in between. But overall, we'll have a lower energy. And what this will look like when we hybridize is we, we're going to take these, these are the unhybridized ones. This is what I'm trying to draw over here with our 2s and, and our 3 2p orbitals. So we have our 2s orbital here, our py along this direction, px along this direction, pz along this direction. When we hybridize these, we get four orbitals out. So we put four orbitals in, we get four orbitals out. That's one part of valence bond theory. When we hybridize, we get the same number of orbitals out that we put in and we can see they're pointed along these dimensions. Now there's these little minor lobes and your textbook mostly just omits these because they just get confusing to draw. Um, they're there but don't really matter. And so what we can do now, this sp3 hybridized carbon, we can look at these 1s orbitals from maybe four hydrogen atoms, or it could be something else, but hydrogen makes it simple, and we will get overlap between the 1s orbital on the hydrogen and each of these sp3 hybrid orbitals arranged in this tetrahedral geometry, and we get methane. So methane comes from this overlap of 1s orbitals between our sp3 hybrid orbitals and our 1s orbitals on carbon. Now, there's no reason that we have to limit ourselves to just uh, hybrid to hybridizing specifically all four orbitals. Uh, and what we'll see as we continue to look at valence bond theory is that this can also apply to um, hybridizing only part of the total number of orbitals. So we can have sp2 or sp hybrid orbitals. Um, we will continue to look at this in future videos, um, but just wanted to get at least the introductory ideas of this here so we can uh, continue our discussion in the future about this. So in future videos, we'll look at other types of hybridization and how these molecules combine and, and how it leads to many of the geometries we already know and understand. But now we can think about where are the electrons actually located in these bonds and uh, what do, how do these atomic orbitals combine to form these uh, different types of uh, hybrid orbitals and bonding orbitals that we see uh, in molecules.